On Friday the 7th of October 2016, the next expansion for Star Wars The Old Republic, Knights of the Eternal Throne, will finally be revealed. There are very little details that we know about the expansion, in that it is a continuation of Knights of the Fallen Empire, obviously, and this image here of a mysterious robed figure with glowing hands, looking ready to attack somebody who looks like Senya, but players cannot be too sure. But the main question is, who is the mysterious robed figure? Here are my top 5 theories on who it could be. Be warned of spoilers to follow from Vanilla Swotor, Shadow of Revan, and Knights of the Fallen Empire. The Emperor is dead. Long live the new Emperor. Darth Malgus was an important figure within Vanilla Swotor, being an important leader within the Sith Empire. However, since Malgus's demise in the Flashpoint the False Emperor, when he tried to be his own Emperor in his own Empire, fans of Swotor have been wildly speculating his return in the hopes that he didn't die when he was knocked off into the shafts of his space station, though this was seemingly changed in later patches where players simply strike him down. Since then, things have been quiet on the Malgus front, and the assumption is that he died by the fall or by being cut down. Then, three and a half years later, when Bioware were revealing Knights of the Fallen Empire, they showed this deleted clip from the Sacrifice trailer. <laughs> I once said a while back that with the Sacrifice trailer costing a lot of money to make, why would Bioware spend money on a section of the trailer with such an important figure in SWOTOR only to suddenly remove it and act like it never happened? Now Bioware have said from the start that all they were doing was simply playing around with ideas and that Malgus possibly still being alive and trapped in Carbonite by the Eternal Empire is just one of their many ideas. Well, we all know how cunning Bioware can be and what I believe is that Bioware was simply trying to remind us of Malgus again Hello. for a later piece of content. I don't know when, I don't know how, and I don't know why, but I feel Malgus may one day return. Perhaps the robe figure could be him, and now he's become stronger in the Force and changed a lot in the nine years since his demise. You cannot be allowed to remain in the old world. Your presence threatens the order we have fought to maintain. Who exactly are the Helds of Zildrog? Players first encountered them in Chapter 7 of Knights of the Fallen Empire when Senya and the Outlander return to Zakul to find the Lady of Sorrows. After Koth catches up to the Outlander and he and Senya have a cat fight, the players are then introduced to the Heralds of Zildrog who want to try and get rid of the Outlander as the Heralds control the Old World, the name given to the Swamp Undercity of Zakul, and the Outlander does not fit within their vision of the Old World. Though under orders by the Lady of Sorrows not to kill the Outlander, the Exalted, who is the leader of the Heralds, disobeys her despite the fact that the Lady is keeping the Exalted's son hostage. The Lady then kills the Exalted for disobeying and made his son, Brennan, the new Exalted. Not much else is known about the Heralds, other than that Zildrog is the name of the mythical dragon that they all worship, and that their religion was pushed out of the Eternal Empire by Valkorion until Arkan came into power and signed a truce with them in the hopes that they would help in the hunt for the Outlander. So why exactly could the robed figure be the Herald of Zildrog? Well, due to the way they dress and how the robed figure is dressed. The Herald's dressed in all black attire, and if you compare the two images, it almost looks like the costume the robed figure on the right is wearing is a modified version of the Herald's costume. If this is the case, could we be seeing bigger things from the Heralds? Could this perhaps even be their lost god, Isaacs? I have decided that life is more interesting with you in it. If you wish to keep railing against me, then so be it. Your interference changes nothing. This video took inspiration from a conversation I, Technique Games, Swotor Central, and Locked on Target had on our Coffee Thoughts video where we spoke about this exact topic. Locked on Target came up with a crazy theory in that Valkorion and Vicious are two different people but are the same person as well. The assumption is that the Emperor is actually split off into two entities, similar to how Revan was revealed to be in Shadow of Revan. For the Emperor, one side is Vishut and the other is Valkorion, though both are aware of each other's presence. I think it was a split off like Revan, uh, and that there's Vishut and Valkorion and they were once one entity, uh, and maybe they've recombined yeah. now. Uh, but I believe like one was light side and uh, was one was dark side and was like, you know what? Let's let's just have a contest since we're an internal entity. They would have to get pretty bored. Uh, so I'm going to rule one society through fear and power. You rule one another society 
with uh, complacency and uh, basically like blessing. Both are trying to gain power within the galaxy and both Vishit and Valkorion are trying to beat each other in becoming the most powerful. The assumption is there because there is still doubt that Valkorion is truly Vishit because he never properly calls himself Vishit and due to the idea on how Valkorion can seemingly be in two places at once. On the one hand he was controlling the actual empire and on the other creating a new family and an eternal empire in secret. So they are still the same person, but they split off into two entities a long time ago. Okay, with me so far? So if we run with this theory by Locked On Target, we sort of know the position Valkorion is in, but where has Vishit been all this time? My assumption is that after Vishit consumed all life on Zyos, this not only made him more powerful than what he already was, but regave him a body vessel, or he was powerful enough to take somebody else's, similar to how Zash tried to take the Sith Inquisitor's body in Chapter 1. In those six years, he's been quiet, allowing the Eternal Empire to come into fruition. After all, this is all just a game to Vishit and Valkorion. And now that neither Arkan or Valkorion is in control of the Eternal Throne, it's time for Vishit to step in and try to regain control of the galaxy and may return in the form of this figure. And if we assume the person in the background is Senya, then Vishit will go straight after her, knowing how much of a connection she has to Valkorion in the hopes of getting his attention. What happens then is anybody's guess, but it's simply something to think about. If you're Revan, who spoke to me outside the temple? Of course. It's so obvious now. You have no idea what I am, what I've become. I was a dark lord of the Sith. I was the prodigal knight. I was powerful. But I was also weak. Not anymore. But Bioware said Revan's story was done. Oh, contraire! Do you really think Bioware are simply going to say goodbye to a character so important within their Star Wars games? I have to give credit to Swotor Central as this is one of his theories, so do go check him out at youtube.com forward slash Swotor Central and especially watch some of his theory videos including the Valkorian theory. I also didn't mention earlier, do go check out Locked On Target at his YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Locked On Target Show. Anyway, back in the Shadow of Revan, it was revealed that Revan had split into two personalities, the dark side of him trying to bring back the Emperor in order to defeat him for good, and the light side spiritual Revan trying to stop the dark. Side Revan. The Dark Side Revan was so consumed by hate that he was so determined to try and relinquish the Emperor once and for all. In defeating me, you let the real enemy linger on. You... you doom the galaxy! However, once the Emperor returned again, he never got his chance to do this before he and the Light Side Spirit Revan combined to become one again. The assumption here is that now Revan is whole again, the burden the Dark Side Revan had also still lingers, and now Revan cannot be a free spirit until the Emperor is truly dead. Thus, Revan somehow found a way to come back to life, perhaps even only temporarily, and cannot move on until the Emperor is finally dead. Perhaps what we are seeing in this shot is that Revan has finally come back and Senya finds him, but feels that he may be some sort of threat. It doesn't necessarily explain the crashed ship, but one thing at a time, folks. One thing at a time. And now for number one. Out of all the characters related to Valkorion and Kotfi, there is one character we didn't get to know about. We know a lot about Valkorion himself, Senya, Valen, and Arkan. But there's one family member who's missing. Your freedom will be the wars you wage. Thexen is the twin brother of Arkan, who is the black-robed of the two. As seen in the Sacrifice trailer, Thexen was killed after Arkan tried to strike at Valkorion, though Thexen tried to stop him, causing the two to get into a very brief lightsaber fight where Arkan struck Thexen through the stomach. We know that growing up, Arkan and Thexen's relationship was very strong, but Valen and both Arkan and Thexen ignored their mother Senya whilst growing up, despite Thexen always looking like the more mature of the three. After Thexen died, a funeral was held for him, and Senya always believed that Thexen had died in the wars on the Core Worlds, but then Valen told her the horrible truth. I told you before that Arkin had a brother, Thexen. They were inseparable until his death. Valen told me during our fight, Arkin murdered Thexen, his own brother. Maybe if I had raised him... Now, Senya lives with knowing that Thexen really died at the hands of his brother. 
So why do I truly believe that this robed figure is Thexen? Well, in the sacrifice trailer, we were shown the relationship between Arkan and Thexen, and then within the actual game, we never actually saw anything more about this apart from a few moments of regret. Bioware truly wanted us to see how the two grew up and the bond between them. And whilst Kotfi was all about Arkan's rise to power, I think that Kotet could be about Thexen's return. At this point in Swimitor, Senya is currently out there somewhere in the galaxy with Arkan. My assumption is that Arkan is now going to try and redeem himself as Senya is hoping, and that Thexen will somehow return before Senya as seen here. However, perhaps Thexen isn't exactly a good guy anymore, and whilst Arkan would try and set himself on a good path, Thexen wants vengeance on his brother for killing him, which is why Senya looks ready to fight him, and perhaps the ship in the back Ground is a Republic cruiser, hence the what looks to be a Republic soldier in the corner that Senya and Arkan were taking refuge on, but was shot down by Thexen. What happens next is anybody's guess, but whether this figure is Thexen or not, I 100% believe that we have not seen the last of Thexen. I hope he returns anyway, as I would love to know more about him. That was my top 5 theories on who the rogue figure is. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, do share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Do also subscribe to Swotor Central for his Swotor theories and Locked on Target show for his videos, and check out my previous top 5 video on what Kotet needs to do to keep its player base. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and I shall see you next time. And a farewell to you. Thank you.